Greetings, Earth Angelics of the Blue Ray Tribe, stepping into full embodiment. Today, with all these powerful energetic waves coming in, we definitely stepped into a new timeline. It was a merging and an emerging of new Earth timelines. Many of you felt this. This was like being in between words and worlds. <laughs> the worlds are the words. It is like dreaming while awake. Many of you are experiencing these things too, where the consciousness is still in this realm while we enter the dream realm of the non physical or the subconscious mind or the inner conscious mind, however you want to look at it. We're still having massive heat waves here and all over this realm up in the arctic circle especially in northern russia siberia it was reported 100 degrees the other day today more flooding all over this realm china was receiving more flooding japan and now reported today russia in ruza russia near moscow the flooding reached a certain level to where the dam a major dam broke there's footage on RT News that it actually carried a house down the river with, when this dam broke. Also, on Nick Thomas TV reported that a massive object came in front of the sun. We don't know if this was what some people call Planet X or Nibiru. It was very massive to where it created a huge ring of fire around the sun. This was recorded in Egypt. Or it could be a massive mothership. We're not sure at this time. But I'll post the footage at the end of today's transmissions. It's just a two minute clip that someone filmed of this event in Egypt. Today on the Schumann charts, we had several blasts of white light. Higher dimensional 5D gamma waves manifesting at 20 UTC, a 27 blast rising up into a 52 hertz amplitude at 22 UTC. Then we had a major blast of 69 hertz at 530 UTC. So many have felt this coming in. When you look at the charts, it almost looks like a big white flag. This can be symbolic or synchronic with the dark ones waving the white flag and surrender the arconic energy, the malevolent beings that have been keeping humanity and life in the lower frequencies of separation and suffering, they know time is up for their reign of terror, their reign of ignorance. So they're waving the white flag. But it ain't over till it's over. So we know that new earth is shining through, the veils are thinning, the veils are lifting. 5-5 five, five coming in. Yesterday, when I was in meditation in the evening, in the woods, as soon as I was done, I received a contact from a friend. She, she wanted to let me know about an experience she had as she was driving yesterday. Within her mind, within herself, she experienced like a ringing of bells, which I let her know that with these veils thinning, that is the celestials coming in. And she said she's never experienced that before. These are some of the things that many people are experiencing and it's going to be happening more frequently for all light workers, star seeds specifically. And some people are hearing these bells. They might hear trumpets. It might hear like angelic prayer or chants or singing, light language, all these things. So this is becoming the new normal for the awakening. Also, it's reporting this major comet that has been titled Neowise. That people are seeing it with the naked eye now. This is potentially a kachina of part of the prophecies of the Hopi. At the end of today's transmission, I'll tell you a story from two days ago about Neo and then the synchronicity with this comet. Some people are calling this the orange kachina. We had over 139 earthquakes, M1.5 or greater, in the last 24 hours. Looking at the map on EarthquakeTrack.com, we have multiple. The first image, there's three trinities of earthquakes. Two of them are forming a pyramid shape or a triangle. 
and three are in perfect alignment up in Alaska. We had the trinity around the equator and then one around the Tropic of Capricorn. We had a 4.6 in the Banda Sea, six degrees south of the equator. It's actually 6.5666 and 128.768. It's 1608 UTC. So we have the 666, the 88, <coughs> and the 88. Then we had in Indonesia at 1701 UTC, a 44, 4.4, 4. 188 kilometers depth. So we have the 88 and the 44 and the 17. And then the apex was in the Philippines, a 4.6 at 125.055. Longitude 6.594, so it's 6 degrees north of the equator. So we have the 555 code, creating the trinity. We had also in the heart of Lemuria a 3.3 in Hawaii, 19 latitude, 155 longitude, at 1545 UTC. So we had the 5555 and the 33 code. And then with the Atlantean energy in Puerto Rico, 17 latitude, 66 longitude, and a 3.3 magnitude, 1637. We have the 37, the 33, 17, and 66 all in this one activation portal. We also had in greater Los Angeles area in California, 33 epicenter in the latitude and 117 longitude, a 3.0. At 10.03 UTC, so we have the 13, the 33, and the 17 encoded, and that was the apex of the pyramid. We also had a very powerful 5.1 in northern Colombia, at the very top of the continent of South America, 5.1 at 3.22 UTC, which was 6.774 latitude, 72 longitude, 159 kilometers depth. We also had in eastern Uzbekistan, a 4.3, it's 639 UTC, and this is where the trinity of the three sacred mountains, the Tian Shan, the Kunlun, and the Himalayan mountains merge together, forming this trident, this trinity, like an arrowhead or a sacred pyramid. Taiwan today had a 4.3 at 324 UTC. And then Japan at 254 UTC had a 4.5. So again, the whole grid is lit up. All portals are activating through these series of five earthquakes. It looks like a big dome around Asia, the continent of Asia, like an upside dome or a smiley face. Pachamama has a big grin today with all the releasing and letting go. I also received a download today in the shower (laughs) where many of you are also experiencing these downloads when we connect with the water element, which was connected to the concept of Schrodinger's cat. I'm going to tell you a story at the end of the transmission about the story that came to me from the physicist Erwin Schrodinger, who is from Austria, and his thought experiment with the kitty cat. A whole. We'll start today's transmissions from Divine Sistar of the Light, Laura Pleiadian. Being multidimensional. I live in a different world than you, yet I am here allowing a body to function through my frequency blueprint. I know not time, yet pass through it. I access all worlds simultaneously through the communication device of frequency. This is what earth beings would term in mortal language, multidimensional. The DNA shifted and is shifting moment to moment to allow the changes through the DNA to be activated and integrated into the earth memory of the whole, as if now, which is now, these sudden changes in DNA shifts the subconscious of all, sort of like waking up to changes, inherent through the program of DNA creation is the blueprint of the divine being held as the creation design of incarnation blueprint memory. I was present during this, and I am now. During the monumental creation stage of the divine human and form, living in a different world yet here, my consciousness 
is the consciousness of all. There is nothing outside of my awareness and frequency. All go through this consciousness since the before earth and into eternity. This frequency that I am is the vibration of love. This is multidimensional love, not only earth love. It is love that encompasses it all. There are no limits in this love. With the divine council of overseers and the Elohim, representatives of form embodiment, we are here now and activate you now. As this multidimensional being in love knows not time, exists not through time, yet always has existed and always has been present everywhere, we activate your DNA blueprint now. Through this, the eternity, no limit, all-encompassing love is here now. From the new DivineHumanity.com, today from Divine Sister of the Light Sandra Walter, Divine DNA Decrees, Almighty I Am Presence, restore the patterns of perfection in my body, mind, emotions, energy, fields, light body, and divine DNA with ease and grace. From the ascensionpath.com, today from Divine Sister of the Light, Sohila. Buckle up, buttercups. It's gonna be a long, hot summer. You may feel a little bit dreamy during this time. We are going to continue to go through a lot of energetic shifts this month. We are still in a retrograde season. Chiron is set to shift into retrograde Saturday, and Mercury is set to shift direct on Sunday. These shifts are meant to assist us in turning our flow or direction inward. It is a time of healing and reflection. We may have a lot of old inner child stuff surfacing this month. We are going to continue to release a lot of deeply rooted patterns this month. Next week is set to be extra intense. Starting on the 13th, which is Monday, we are going to go through 10 back-to-back galactic activation portal days. That is a lot of upgrades and a lot of energy to handle. This stream of cosmic energies will make this month's new moon in Cancer extra intense. We can expect a lot of emotions to run high as we make this shift out of Cancer season and into Leo season. This month's energy will require us to get a little less emotional and a little more creative. We are also adjusting to the energetic changes brought about by the last three eclipses we just had. We have been getting hit with a lot of powerful cosmic energies and planetary alignments. Many are still needing time to adjust to all of these energies. The energies are really going to build up this month. We also have the Galactic New Year on the 26th. This is a powerful portal where a cosmic vortex opens up, allowing more of these waves of light to reach us. These are light codes coming right from the galactic center. The steam of energy will lead us into the Lion's Gate portal. This gateway will peak 8-8 and will be extra intense this year. We can expect to see more solar flares and even more physical fires during this time. This summer we will continue to go through a huge physical transformation. As these light codes are upgrading our DNA, this is a powerful time for humanity as we are being recoded. This is a very much a rebirth phase, and Leo season will bring with it the rising of the phoenix. From Sparks of Divine Light Healing dot com today, from Divine Bro Star of the Light Daniel Scranton, how you will get to the new 5D Earth from the 9D Arcturian Council. Greetings, we are the Arcturian Council. We are pleased to connect with all of you. We are very encouraged by the signs that we see of improvement here on your world. We are noticing how many of you are letting go of layers upon layers of distortion and illusion and finally getting to the core of who you are as beings of magic, beings of love, beings of joy, light, and laughter. You are creating the fifth dimensional earth with what is inside of you. When you strip away another layer of that which has no longer served you for quite some time, you get to that core, you get to the heart center, the aspect of you that is so ready to put all of the pieces together and to have that whole self reflected back to you as the world you are living on. We know that it is easier to look outside of yourself and play the blame game. 
We know that you have done this and we know that you are getting tired from pointing those fingers and shaking those fists. We can feel that there are enough of you there on earth who are willing to do what you know you need to do in order to create and inhabit the fifth dimensional earth experience. You will get to that plane of existence because of your willingness to recognize that anything and anyone that is outside of you is also inside of you. And when you can make peace with all of the various energies that are out there and also within you, then you can start to recognize the signs that a new day is upon you. You are a part of a movement, and that movement is about co-creating a new age, an age of enlightenment, and you are going to get there by focusing inside of yourselves on that which you know is at your core, that which is beyond all of the illusions. Some people on your world refer to the illusion as the matrix, and we understand why they do so, but we are not talking about science fiction when we talk to you about the mechanics of your universe. There are no villains in your story. There is you as a source energy being, creating experiences for yourselves. And if you want to create that beautiful, new, fifth dimensional earth, then you must go within. You find that light, that joy, that laughter, and that love, because those are the colors that you want to paint your portrait of the new earth with. You have the ability to do this right now, and no one, and nothing, can hold you back. We are the Arcturian Council. And we have enjoyed connecting with you from DanielScranton.com. Today from Divine Sister of the Light, Suzanne Lee. We, the members of your galactic family, wish to remind you that it is the now for all of you to remember that you have chosen to take an earth vessel during this now to better assist dear Mother Gaia with her planetary ascension. Gaia, also known as Planet Earth, is ready to return to her true, multidimensional, planetary being. Therefore, she, as well as all the multidimensional beings who have chosen to take a human Earth vessel and or to inhabit the core of the planet Earth, are ready to assist the third dimensional humans to remember that they, too, have a higher dimensional expressions of self. Many humans on earth have temporarily forgotten their higher dimensional expressions of self and unfortunately some humans have even fallen into the dark side however the remembrance of one's higher self can and will awaken them to the truth of their own multi-dimensional self fortunately your multi-dimensional self can be remembered and even communicated with once your human self begins to remember your higher dimensional self, your higher dimensional self resonates to the higher fourth, fifth, and beyond dimensions of reality. Furthermore, you can communicate with your higher self by setting a certain time and place in which you can relax and or go into meditation. It is a good idea to have a computer opened or paper and pen so that you can document the information that you receive while in a higher state of consciousness. At first, it may seem too difficult to put aside a certain time and place, or you may not yet believe that there are higher dimensional beings to resonate to higher frequencies of reality. However, if you can put aside a certain time and place in which your full attention is based on remembering and even interacting with your own higher frequency of self, you may begin to remember that you are much more than you have thought. In fact, during a solar eclipse, such as is occurring to many of you within this now, you may discover that there are higher dimensional energy fields that are surrounding you and even activating frequencies of consciousness that you do not usually experience. Blessings from your galactic family. We are always with you. From multidimensions.com And today, from Shamtrul Rinpoche, Tibetan Buddhist Master, Never underestimate the power of blessings. Just how the sun shines onto this world without ever discriminating. The compassionate wisdom energy of all of the Buddhas pervades everything. No matter where you are, no matter what you do, this energy is always there. It is always with you. But just as you need to open your eyes to experience the light of the sun, you have to open your mind with unshakable devotion to experience the blessings of the energy of the Buddhas. The more that your mind opens, the greater the blessings that will energize your mind and power your practice all the way 
to your enlightenment. Shantru Rinpoche, today from the Zolkin Times. Kin 102, White Spectral Wind. Spectral is the name for the number 11, and its keywords are liberation, release, and dissolve. The 11th day of a wave spell offers everyone the chance to release and let go. Experience how lighter you can feel when you no longer lose energy over things you once gave importance to. Ponder today what really matters and let go of the rest. We can waste too much time and energy on circumstances we have no power to change. Today is white wind, which represents communication, breath, and spirit. White wind days are a breeze. The words to the Pink Floyd song, Keep Talking, sums up today perfectly. Keep those channels of communications open. Make that call or write that email or say sorry if that's overdue. Write a poem or a story, give a talk or engage in a debate. As it is a spectral day, this suggests that we can be liberated by what we say. So get it off your chest. The time is now. Today's guide is the white wind, so we have a double dose of this energy. Today from Divine Sister of the Light, Christina Papa Giorgio, White Spectral Wind, Kin 102, Liberating the Word of Spirit, 911 Liberation Portal End Game. The double winds of change are blowing today. 97 2020 equal 97 22 equal 974 equal 911 equal 11 equal 2. 1111 code coming in. 9 endings destiny humanity. 11 portal gate polarity. 7 magic mystic spiritual solitude. 4 form structure foundation. 2. Partnership, Cooperation, Twins, Kin 102 equal 3, Holy Trinity, Joy, Creativity, Union, a huge freedom code for liberating divine truth and divine will, a brilliant day to connect with divine messages, releasing all impediments to building your new foundations, day 11 in the yellow human wave spell of wisdom, influence, intelligence, free will, and abundance. Today we are able to dissolve and release anything that is impeding our evolution to greater wisdom, sovereignty, and freedom. Tone of creation, spectral is the eleventh tone of creation. It operates in the emotional realm and its actions are that of dissolving, releasing, and liberating. All this coupled with a 911 code today for breakthrough, transformation. This is a very powerful opportunity to release the past and move forward fearlessly free from obstructions. The spectral action together with the nine code of the day works to create final closure, dissolving all impediments to you finally claiming your true power in order to rebuild the new. Tone 11 symbolizes a gateway in polarity, inviting you to step through into a new world. You can also use this very potent 911 clearing code, double wind, Blue storm and spectral energy today to focus, yellow human, on your specific objective. You can command this energy to clear, cleanse, dissolve, and transform any energy that you desire it to with harm to none. Earth service, you may desire to use this code to visualize all Gaia's rubbish, density, and negative toxic energies are sucked up into the vacuum and recycled into divine energy. They can be returned to Gaia in the form of natural resources, energy, and love. Together, we are stronger. Today's question is, what do I need to release in order to be truly liberated and become a clear channel for spirit to work through me? So blessings, dear ones, a great day for listening and channeling spirit through writing, meditation, journaling, drawing, singing, chanting, prayer, and connecting through the natural world. Divine blessings for allowing this breath of spirit to flow through your purified channel today, heralding great revolutionary transformation. In La Kek a la Kin, Christina White, Magnetic World Bridger, Kin 66, Kin 102, White Spectral Wind. The mantra, the code for today is, I dissolve in order to communicate. Releasing breath, I seal the input of spirit. With the spectral tone of liberation, I am guided by the power of my own power doubled. And with these powerful, liberating energies, 
flowing in fully now. Nothing holding us back, nothing stopping us now. Star blossoms, fully open, fully awake, fully aware, anchoring into your sacred portal where your feet touch the holy earth, the holy ground, the sacred ground. You are that sacred grounding rod that brings down the heavenly energies, the heavenly chi, the holy fire, the holy water down through your vessel from the heavens above into the earth below into the crystalline core through the central channel that runs through your divining rod. This is the sacred tower of divinity, the sacred obelisk, the staff or the rod of the pharaoh. The kingdom of heaven is yours and the kingdom of heaven is within and everywhere simultaneously here now in this eternal now so let us know beloved beings of light in the comments below what you're seeing what you're feeling your visions your dreams your synchronicities and if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe and click the subscribe button below the red button with the little bell next to it to get notifications on future uploads and as always we have a link in the description below to the transcriptions of today's transmissions and we archive these on our website primedisclosure.com. I'd like to also thank everyone for your support and pledges on Patreon. If you'd like to support our mission and work with Prime Disclosure, you can make a pledge at patreon.com forward slash Prime Disclosure. That link will also be below in the description. So I appreciate all of you and everyone's support through this great transition and transformation of consciousness. So now for a couple stories here, a couple short stories. Hopefully we'll keep them short here. <laughs> you never know what's going to come through. So the one story which is connected to this Neowise, Neowise comet that many people are talking about that is being visible in the night skies with this amazing tale. The tale of stories told long ago coming to fruition through our ancient ancestors and the prophecies of those that see the great seers of all times and all lineages. So we were on site a couple days ago connecting with an IT person at a client's and they were running what's called fiber optics. It's like a cable made of glass that can send light through it. It's the fastest, one of the fastest ways to transport information or transfer information, data. Some of these ISPs, internet service providers, are using these fiber optic technologies. And the tech met with us because there was an issue and we were talking about his job and some other things and he had worked for AT&T and said that it was not so great working for them and this new company is with that does fiber optic is a much better company he said they have much better staff and management and all this stuff and then he said something about that it's been a blessing to work with their IT staff their programmers and he said we have a bunch of neos that work <laughs> in their office I was like, Neo, what's that? And he said, you know, from the Matrix, the Matrix movie, the guy's name, Neo, which is synchronic with the one, you know, he was kind of that savior type being or the one to free consciousness from this simulation. So I thought that was funny. He used that reference because I've, in the movie, he was, I think, some kind of genius programmer or something like that. And so he was calling these programmers and IT people Neos. I mean, he was an IT person himself, but he said they had these genius programmers that worked with him. And then that evening when I returned home and was working on the transmission that popped up in, I think, my feed on YouTube or whatever, with this Neo Wise. So the, the Neo, the symbolism of the one or the hero, the savior type energy which is synchronic with the christ consciousness the exalted one king which is connected to true royalty not this fake royalty of these kings and queens of 3d but the royalty the royal legion of the lyran nation also connected to royalty 
like royal blue of the blue ray, the blue wave, the blue light, and wise, the wisdom of the one, which generally symbolizes source creator, Buddha consciousness, Christ consciousness, cosmic consciousness, universal consciousness, however you want to name it or describe it, explain it, it is what in our lineage we call the great mystery, that which is beyond all concepts. No word even comes close, no thought or feeling can even touch it, and that is the true I am presence of pure light, pure love, that is your true self, here now, in this body, where I always am. And then a lot of information is coming out today about this Neowise. So you can do a search on YouTube for that if you haven't seen that information about this great comet. Another sign in the heavens above, in the skies, eyes to the skies. And then I believe I read a report that in North America we will be able to see it, possibly tonight in the night skies. But you have to look into that. And then for my second story here about Schrodinger's cat, Erwin Schrodinger. In 1935, during his course of discussions with Albert Einstein, came up with this thought experiment about a problem he saw in the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, which is applied to everyday objects. In simple terms, which I'm going to build a story around this to take it to another level. This came through a download today in the shower, because this concept is coming up more and more with these quantum conscious experiences with humanity. And Schrodinger stated that if you place a cat in something that could kill the cat, such as a radioactive atom in a box and sealed it, you would not know if that cat was dead or alive until you opened the box, so that until the box was opened, the cat was, in a sense, both dead and alive at the same time simultaneously. So the story that came to me was... You have two people, say two buddies, walk into a laboratory and they see this guy there with a box and a lab coat. And outside the box is these levers and gears and different tubes. Very strange box. Is this Pandora's box? Who knows? So the gentleman asks this guy, what's in the box? He says, I've placed a cat within the box and I'm doing an experiment that at this certain time, there is a beaker in that box, and within there is a deadly chemical, such as a cyanide gas. And that trigger may break the glass, or it may not, once the timer is set, and in three days that timer will go off. So the three guys say, oh, can we come back to find out how this experiment goes? (laughs) The gentleman says, sure, come back in three days' time at 12, 12 p.m., So they leave, and the one gentleman, he's very optimistic, and he was excited that this cat's going to live, and he's going to enjoy meeting this special cat. The other one, not so optimistic, kind of like negative thinking or the glass half-empty kind of pessimism, is for certain that cat's not going to make it. So he's, as an empath, he's very worried, and anxiety's rising up that, He's going to see a deceased cat when they open the box. So for three days, the optimistic one is very excited to see the experiment and knowing for sure that this cat is going to bounce out of the box into his arms. And the other one, more anxiety is building and more fear and he can't sleep. And all this dread is coming over him. This great unknown is very fearful and making him very uncomfortable. The other one's trying to cheer him up. It's going to be okay. And now I know he's not going to make it. So they return to this place at 12.12. They got there a little early. They got there at noon. (laughs) Are you following me here? (laughs) So the little bell goes off at 12.12, the alarm, and they hear a breaking sound. And the guy's basically having total panic attacks. And the other one... A little fear is creeping, and he said, oh, I heard something break. So the scientist says, would you all like me to open the box and see the result? They say, sure. The one's like, yeah, I don't know. The other one's like, yeah, I still think 
that he's gonna make it, he's gonna live. So the guy slowly opens the box and out flies a dove. <laughs> Just kidding. The box was empty. There was nothing in the box. The one was totally relieved and the other just laughed because in his optimism, he said, oh, you got us. And the scientist looks at him and says, you don't think I would leave a precious cat in a box for three days by itself? You don't think I would be that cruel, would you? So the moral of the story is don't believe anything you hear. Part of the paradox, you know, we live in this paradox where emptiness is form and form is emptiness. And the mind wants to be right. The part of the lesson is that what Einstein once said, that science doesn't prove anything. The best science can do is give us a maybe. Maybe it's alive. Maybe it's dead. Maybe it's high. Maybe it's low. Maybe it's flat. Maybe it's round. <laughs> or maybe it's both. The mind always tends to, not always, we erase that word, wants to think in terms of black or white, form or empty, one or the many. One implies many, and many implies the one. That's why the Zen master came up with the term mu, M-U, not the thing. Or they would say not to. It's not one, and it's not the many. What is that it? That, that great mystery we speak of. The emptiness beyond the void. The pure, clear light of bliss. So in this realm that we experience in this 3D reality, we have the black and the white, and the 50 shades of gray in between. So science, with its great maybes, maybe the Big Bang happened, maybe it's a thought in the mind of God, maybe nothing became something, these great maybes. And through navigating these great unknowns, the moment we hold on to and we think something's true, the timeline shifts or the universe shifts and changes that concept to be false. That's why in the Buddhist, Taoist, Eastern philosophies, spiritual practices, we practice non-attachment because we know the impermanence of all things. So in this science of not proving anything, it helps us navigate through this realm in a, the most cohesive, congruent way possible. And Einstein said that the best science can do is give us a maybe, but most of the time it proves that we were wrong. How do you like that? Every day being proof, showing proof of the errors of my ways and my thoughts. But even that we do not become attached to. We stay fluid and open. Only don't know, the Zen master says. Only don't know. Is the earth flat or round? Or only don't know. Depends on your perspective, because the Zen master realizes it's all about perception and your perspective. Many people debate, is the earth spinning? If the earth is rotating, is it clockwise or is it counterclockwise? The person in the so southern hemisphere is 100% certain it's moving, let's say, clockwise. In the northern hemisphere, uh, they're certain it's counterclockwise and they debate. The earth is always rotating clockwise. No, counterclockwise. These are the energies we spend our times debating nonsense because it's perspective, it's what angle you look at, then the third person comes along and says, the earth's not rotating at all. It's still, everything's moving around it, so it appears to be rotating. <laughs> the genius, Dr. Richard Allen Miller, the other day in a conversation he was having, said people come to him all the time, ask him, what do you think? Is the earth flat or is it round? And he says, yes. <laughs> yes, but of course. Yes, it's this. Yes, it's that. Yes, that's the glass half full concept. But he would say, yes, it's, if you look at it this way, it's flat. If you look at it that way, it's round. It's perception, perspective. So what does this prove? Nothing. It just proves that most debates are based on a person's belief system. We call the internal map of reality. That's an NLP concept, narrow linguistic programming. Neurology, the brain, linguistic language, programming, the programming of the brain based on past experiences or life upbringing, life experiences, create this map. And then they become people's ideologies and belief systems, which at times could get one in trouble. But not to worry, it is all a temporary state of mass confusion. <laughs> 
I just cracked my ankle on the desk here. That was the universe saying, come back to the present. Come back and be present here. It's like the thunder strike. Boom. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> uh, oh. So part of the story is also we do not become attached to our beliefs. The moment we think we are totally certain of something, or we have totally grasped it, and we know this is the truth, the universe has a way of pulling the rug out from under you. But no worries. It is all part of the game. Brahma falls asleep all for the joy of waking up. So we are at this precipice, at this critical mass, this tipping point of a collective awakening and a quantum leap of consciousness from Homo sapien to Homo luminous. And what a fun game it was, being that limited, three-dimensional manifestation of Source Creator. And now as co-creators at this Omega Point, this final leap of faith, we tap into our zero-point energy of infinite light and infinite life and manifest into this realm with higher frequency, with pure resonance, our greatest, most beloved heart's desires, with compassion for all sentient beings. And together, we are all lifted into the glorious light of our sacred divine selves, fully embodied here in this third dimensional reality, heaven on earth, the new earth. So thank you for joining me on this great journey through these great times. I appreciate you all. Thank you all for your support, your kindness, your joy, your bliss. Keep shining your light brightly into the night like a great lighthouse guiding the ships home. Ha <laughs> ha. Hee hee. Ho ho. Way showers activated in this glorious light. We are on our way home. On our way home. I love you all. Namaste. Those people in Egypt, I don't know if this is the sun, but note that there is something in front of the sun, there is a ball in the sun. It's entering in front of the sun, a ball. Very strange this video here. E também interessante, né?